Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here at Monster Palooza 2016. It's a creature monster effects and makeup convention in Southern California. There are so many artists, sculptors, painters here, but one booth I'm going to stop at is the Ironhead Studios booth. This is the company that makes the costumes, helmets for many of the movies you've seen before. I'm going to chat with their founder, Jose Fernandez, to learn about their work. Come on. Jose, it's great to see you. Great to see you too. This is an amazing convention. You guys don't do a lot of conventions. My the first convention, first convention. And the uh, catalyst was, I, our recent film was Batman Superman. We did the bat suits, Wonder Woman, the mech. Pretty big uh, reception, people loved it. I'm almost used to it, but I didn't get screen credit, so it kind of pissed me off a little bit. Upset me. Yeah. So I thought, I'd, if they're not gonna give me credit, I need to take my own, so I decided to take a booth and start promoting my own company. People keep saying, I didn't know you guys did that. So I'm like, well, that shouldn't be that way. So I decided to take a booth, build this show, and, and bring my stuff here so other people can enjoy it as well. Absolutely. I mean, people might not know you right now, and I think that's going to change as you, you spread the word and get you more presence, yeah. but they definitely know the work. So tell me a little bit about Ironhead and you know, its creation and some of the stuff you guys have worked on. So my background was I started about almost 30 years ago just sculpting in the shops like you know most people that want to do film and other, I just want, I'm an artist I'm not sure where it leads or where it's even gonna lead but I started and like I could do creature stuff and I used to mess with clothes I used to sculpt a lot monuments and then I think Catwoman was my first break into costume like this is sculpture and it's costume so it started this I guess journey on like the next thing I did the full bat suits and I did you know X-Men and, and then it started to know I was the superhero guy there's a few of us around, but I've turned into one of them. And that's kind of how, so 20 years freelance, and then the last nine years my, on my own, doing my own business. And in that past nine years, I mean, there have been this explosion of movies yeah. requiring your services, and also just the evolution of styles, what yeah. film directors and creative directors want out of the superheroes. What's yeah. going to work best yeah. for the actors? What's going to be uh, interpretation of the characters on screen? Yeah. Can we go through some of that work and have you explain just like yeah. where you were creatively then and what new interesting processes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so let's take a look here, because it's a really beautiful display. And I love that you're not just bringing the new stuff, because you have, I love it. You have Batman's, yeah. his armored helmet from the new movie, but right on top of that, Daredevil, which is a little bit of an older film. Yeah, the, and it's interesting. That Daredevil never made it to screen. That was one of the many concepts. The studio went in this huge arc, which is interesting to me because two weeks in, I sculpted the helmet it should have been, and they went on this arc and eventually landed up where I was in the beginning, which is funny to me. But this was a helmet version, never made to screen. We wore it in fittings, then didn't make it. But I, I, I thought it was really well done, so I just brought it as like an homage. And if you move through the case, this, you know, Snake Eyes and Cobra, these are interesting too. These are like the newer iteration of this world. Like this is all hand sculpted. Um, and this one is all digital, completely digital. But I don't solely do it. I still go back to traditional. It has its place to me for sure. But this, this world is great because now you can not only do the external but internal. It becomes more like a product, where meaning not in a bad way, but in a way where you can, it's modular. If something fails or breaks, you can just reproduce another one and put it in. The old days, everything was custom made, each piece, so it made it very labor intensive. Yeah. It's still labor intensive, but I can now use my labor to make it better instead of just trying to make it fit, right. which is great. Um, and can, you, yeah. can you talk about how that process begins? You know, if a director comes to you and they say, you want to design a cowl for a new Batman movie yeah. or something, right? And they know an actor, so you get a live cast, and they have some sketches or something. Yeah, or, absolutely. They, they, that's an interesting uh, question. The, I did three other Batman films. This is my fourth time at, on Batman. So the first ones we did the old fashioned way. We did plaster bandage, you know, molds of their bodies, you know, plaster head casts. Now it's all digital completely. Like back in the day to get a back cowl to fit, which I did multiple times, we do th anywhere from two to three versions because it would always shrink at different rates. The foam shrinks. So I would have to enlarge their heads to shrink. And sometimes I would miss the marks, so I'd do it again. But now with computers, I rough out the sculpt by hand so it actually looks like I want it to look. Now I can take that information into the computer and then enlarge and expand, shrink areas I want. So now I print the helm, print the cowl, so it still has my hand, but now it's also enhanced by digital. It's a bit of a hybrid. Right. And speaking of digital, you know, things, movies like Tron Legacy, where that movie is so embedded in the digital world. It's about yeah. the digital world, there's a lot of CG in it, but you, there's also a lot of practical, and people might not know. Yeah. You know, the helmets that may be on screen just for a few minutes, all practical, because there was an actor on yeah. set. Yeah. So that was 
were super exciting to me because until this day, I only did sculpture, physical. So I knew I needed to get into this world. I understood it a bit, but I hadn't done it. So when I landed this job in particular, I was multiple levels excited. I love the work. Besides that, I knew I could do it digitally. So all these are purely digital, you know, rendered in the computer and then printed, but then done practically in the real world. So it was a great, I guess, getting my feet wet. Um, and then since then, I've taken it a lot further because these are all just shells. Now, like I'm saying, I'm doing internals, externals, fan pathways, battery mounts, comfort. There's all sorts of things we're adding to it now, which this was the first gen for me. Right, and you also have electronics inside. You know, the, the old Keaton bat cowls, yeah. none of that electronic stuff, but now yeah. you can actually put it in scene. Oh, yeah, and also the thing about the old way, sometimes as soon as you put clay on someone's head, unless you made allowances for it, sometimes you can have spots where it does, their head doesn't fit anymore. Right. So in the computer, now you can, you can, you know, enlarge like a, a layer over their head, so now you ensure it's going to fit. You know, going back to superheroes, yeah. this ch this display here is amazing because you've worked on so many of these Marvel films where it's a lot of helmets now. You know, Captain America, it's a it's a helmet. Yeah. In the comic books, it might not be represented as a helmet; it might be cloth. Yeah. But it's something that the audience are totally responding to. Can you talk about some of these designs? I mean, there's the Thor, Loki helmets, even the Thanos, yep. and and all the way to the Black Panther. In the early days, they would bring sketches, and I was a big part of the process of designing and bringing that to life. Now it's a much different process where they have this system set up, and, it's, and it works. They bring like detail, like the Panther, there's not one Micron that wasn't dictated by Marvel, which I think is amazing. It looks amazing. I was part of that process to make it come to life, but they massage every moment, which is amazing. Loki, they bring me a, a, a fundamental sketch, three-quarter view, like vague, which is amazing to me. Then I was brought into this process, so I help. They're not going to like the fact that I'm saying this, but I help bring that to life. But now they're they have ownership of everything, and, it, and, it, and it, I like both ways. I like it, a sketch or bring me exactly what you want. I work, you know, either way. I mean, even if they give you all the dimensions, all the reference, even if they do their own 3D model, you still have to build it, and you're working with materials. So yeah, no, absolutely, it's the same thing with anything. You give 10 artists one image, you're going to get 10 different outcomes. Right. Can you talk about some of the materials that are used here, and what you've learned over the years of what looks best on film? It varies show to show, or, or particular part to everyone. This is a urethane, so it's got it's it's flexible. It won't. It's not hard. Um, these are flex, like a rigid urethanes. You want you don't want these things to move, like the horns or the wings. So there might be stunt versions which these will bend for safety. So it, it's always different. I mean, these days actually we're using a lot more of um, a printed part. Like we talk about that a lot, 3D print. Right. But that can mean so many things. There's a uh, high resolution prints and there's durable prints. So we use this one called the SLS. Yes. Um, and it's a nylon composite, and most of our helmets now are printed out of the machine and, and those with worn. So this is a print. It's wow. a lot of work to get to be finished, but that's a wearable part. Um, snake eyes are print. Most of the helmets now are prints. How much actually finishing, sanding? A and lot. A lot. The vendor we use never envisioned that being a finished part, and they're always amazed, like, what are you doing with our parts? Because yeah. before we had to do a high-res print, we body shop it, mold it, cast it, because the prints were fragile, and they are. But the new composites are really strong, but they're furry and fuzzy and grainy. But we're, I have an amazing crew that can now take those parts and make them perfect. Material science has changed quite a bit. Prototyping, design, yeah. over nine years. The, all the craftspeople I have that can, you know, kind of follow me, you know, kind of help. When I dictate something, sometimes they scratch their head, but most of them eventually get to that place where we're all proud of it. And then how does the process of designing and building helmets differ from designing and building full body costumes like for Batman v well, Superman? I mean, costumes are a whole another challenge. A helmet is a, a non-moving target. You just have to make it look amazing, comfortable, and not suffocate the human being. But it's less complex. I mean, the complexity comes to not overwhelming your actor. You have yeah. to have it frame them, not overpower them. So that's the part I think I have, which is that it's just that little, those, those little movements that could overwhelm somebody or make them look amazing. Um, as far as costume goes, it's a whole other level because now you have movement. Not only has to look good, it has to not restrict them. It's different body types, like Ben Affleck was six foot three, abnormally wide shoulders, so he was easy to make to even look bigger. Right, he was really great. heroic. You don't need to add bandoliers to his shoulders or anything. Sometimes you get an actor and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. But, you know, then they shoot around. I mean, it works. Or they get a stuntman who actually is the body. But, you know, it's kind of work with that. It's all, it's all you know, magic, trickery. 
their transformations. I mean, you're taking any actor, turning them into these larger in life characters. Um, and even the creative process, it's cool because you brought this sculpt here, it's Apocalypse, there's the X-Men movie coming out, but this Apocalypse isn't the version that we've seen in the trailers. No, what happened was I was actually in the running for the job. Another company won out the bid. So as bummed as I was, because I really wanted to showcase what I could do, I, you know, I actually did almost every, I worked with a designer to do every other costume in the film, so I had my hands full, so I was like, okay. Then when the image was released, I, like most people, was a little underwhelmed. Um, for whatever reasons, you know, I said, okay. But then I had a, a life cast of Oscar Isaac, so I thought, well, what would I have done? So then I went and started putting clay on it, and, was, and then I thought, well, maybe it's not possible to make him look like this character. But that is sculpted on Oscar Isaac, so I'm like, well, no, it was possible. So then I just thought, well, I'll just do my version, an homage, I guess, to this character. So I sculpted the makeup. And then I, um, you know, kind of bashed out the armor fairly quickly, but just an impression of what that character, I think, could be or could have been. And that's why people have to go to shows like this, Monster Palooza, to see these concepts. I'm so glad you're bringing these here. Now, one last question. Going forward, you've done this for so long. You've seen the trends from leather superhero suits to 3D printed helmets. What are things that you look forward to building? What are the kind of costumes and helmets you want to build in the next nine years? Uh, I don't know. You know, it's hard. Like tell tell your plans. It's the things in the Bible. Tell your plans to God, and He'll laugh. I have no idea. I'm just enjoying the ride. Something comes, and I like challenges, so I love to tackle them. Batman was a huge challenge. I did three other ones, but this one, I had. I made his head turn. For me, that was a huge thing. Twenty years, I wanted to do it, and finally, now Batman can turn his cowl, which is huge. So that's kind of a neat surprise. So I have no idea. I mean, if I'm doing this, awesome. Or I'm working with Tess, or no, SpaceX. I designed a spacesuit for, for SpaceX, which I can't show, but they're gonna reveal it in the next possible year, and they're gonna be wearing these to space. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. So I have no idea what holds. I love to design cars. I love design, I'll design anything. I just love building. Awesome, and we love enjoying your stuff on screen and now in person. Thank you so much, Jose, for chatting with me.